Hi there. By now, your general awareness and knowledge of the major scale in different keys should be in good shape. So, in this session, I'd like to look at how the scale links to chords, and more importantly, how we can use this relationship to construct musical ideas. So, to begin with, let's take a look at the chord tones of the C major scale and learn a little bit more about the chord that's associated with this scale. If you remember, the chord tones of a scale are the first, third, fifth and seventh notes. Now, if we count up through the notes of our C major scale, we can easily work these out. We know that C is the first or root note, here's the second, the third is an E, this is the fourth, the fifth is the note G, continuing on to the sixth, and here's the seventh note, a B. OK, so from that we've successfully found that the chord tones of a C major scale are the notes C, E, G and B. For this session though, let's just look at the first three chord tones, C, E and G, and explore these a little deeper. We can take any three chord tones of any scale and create something called a triad. As we progress together, we'll learn about different types of triad and how they change depending on the scales we're using. This triad we've just discovered is called a C major triad, and the name should come as no surprise as it's contained within our C major scale. If we play the three notes of a C major triad together at the same time, we create a chord, and this chord's name as you've probably already guessed, is the chord of C major. Hear how we can outline the overall sound of this chord by playing the individual notes that make up the major triad. Again, this should come as no surprise as it's these notes played together that create a major chord. Remember, as bass players, we want to be able to spell out the sound of any chord just by using individual notes. And to really get this concept under our belts, we need to learn about intervals. As we've already learned, the term interval is used to describe the distance between two notes in music. So, firstly, let's look at the interval between the first two notes of the C major triad. OK, here's our root note of C, and the next note in the triad is an E. Now, the interval between these two notes in music is what's called a major third. Just take a look at the layout of these two notes on the fingerboard. And thanks again to the symmetrical tuning of the bass, this shape is always the interval of a major third, no matter where we choose to play it. But, as you're hopefully aware, it's the notes that change as we move this shape around. For example, we now know a C to an E is a major third, and moving the shape, we can also see that here's another major third, this time between the notes of G and B. Again, there's no surprises why it's called a major third, both these notes are used to form a major triad, which, as you now know, when played together create a major chord. And if we link this knowledge back to the scale of C major, the note of E, remember, is also the third note in the sequence. Now, something that I encourage all students to do is learn how to play intervals in different ways. For example, I've just shown you that the interval of a major third can be found up one string and back one fret from any root note anywhere across the entire fingerboard. But we can also find the same interval of a major third four frets up on the same string as our root note like this. I appreciate it's a bit of a stretch, yes, but it's still well worth knowing. As you can hopefully see, the shapes are different, but importantly they use exactly the same notes. And in this case, it's a C and an E. OK, that's the interval of a major third covered, so let's move on and look at the next interval within our C major triad, the interval between the notes of C and G. 
In music, we call this interval a fifth, and sometimes it's also referred to as a perfect fifth. This is because, as we'll discover in the future, there are some instances where the fifth of a triad changes depending on the chord. Anyway, for now though, let's just look at where these two notes are located on the fingerboard of the bass. OK, here's our root note of C again, and we'll always find a fifth, one string up, and two frets higher than the root note. Just take a look again at the shape we're creating on the fingerboard, and learn to associate this with the interval of a fifth. Remember, this shape will always give us the interval of a fifth, no matter where we choose to play it. Another useful tool, especially with the fifth, is being able to find this particular note lower than our original root note. So, from our C, we can find a low fifth on the same fret as the C, but one string down. When playing between the root note and a low fifth, we can easily create bass lines with either a country or reggae feel. By now, you're hopefully already aware of another really important interval that we've been using so far. It's the interval of an octave. We've already learned that the distance of 12 frets up the neck gives us an octave, but the interval of an octave can also be found from any note, two strings up and two frets higher, just like this. Even if we choose to just use the root note of a chord, in this case C, to create a bass line, never be afraid of using an octave to add interest using rhythms, or playing both octave notes together to add weight to maybe a chorus or the end of a song. can also use the interval of an octave to great effect and apply it to the other intervals in our major triad. We've already seen this with the fifth, but also try experimenting with playing the major third an octave lower, so that this time it's below the root note. Even though a major triad is just three notes, by varying where we choose to play these notes, either up or down the octave, can open up a lot of musical possibilities, and in turn give us more ideas for outlining the sound of a major chord. In this case, C major. In order for you to practice and create some ideas of your own, I've looped this C major groove at the end of this session. I believe that the more we can learn and understand about chords, and of course scales, the more options we have to choose from. It's far better to have more ways of outlining a C major chord than just the one way. This kind of approach makes the things we play sound fresh and exciting to the listener, and of course keeps us busy. The late great Jaco Pistorius used to say, think fast, don't play fast. And the more you embrace this statement and make it a part of your playing, the quicker you'll improve and develop new ideas. Keep practicing and I'll see you next time.